Welcome to ASIO and welcome to the Ben Chifley Building. Terrorism is an enduring threat and terrorism is an evolving threat. Terrorist ideologies, tactics and capabilities change over time, as does the intensity of terrorist willingness to conduct actual attacks. When ISIL formed its caliphate in the Middle East, significant numbers of Australians were seduced by slick propaganda and false narratives, and that led ASIO to raise the terrorism threat level to probable. Our decision was tragically justified. Since 2014, there have been 11 terrorist attacks on Australian soil, while 21 significant plots have been detected and disrupted. Thankfully, there have been no attacks or major disruptions this year. We keep the terrorism threat level under constant review. There can be no set and forget in security intelligence. After careful consideration and consultation, ASIO is lowering Australia's national terrorism threat level to possible. A decision of this nature is not taken lightly or made casually. The subject matter experts in the National Threat Assessment Centre pore over intelligence and employ structured analytical techniques to test, retest and contest their assumptions. The process involves a large number of people and a significant amount of time. Their conclusion is relatively straightforward. While Australia remains a potential terrorist target, there are fewer extremists with the intention to conduct an attack on shore than there were when we raised the threat level in 2014. This does not mean the threat was, is extinguished. Far from it. Possible does not mean negligible. It remains plausible that someone will die at the hands of a terrorist in Australia within the next 12 months. Although, of course, my organisation will literally work around the clock to prevent that from happening. ASIO is still investigating and tracking Australians who embrace violent extremist beliefs. Individuals are still fantasising about killing other Australians still spouting their hateful ideologies in chat rooms, still honing their capabilities by researching bomb making and training with weapons. Critically though, there are fewer of these people than there were previously, and few of them are likely to conduct an actual attack in Australia. So what's changed? Perhaps, the most significant, perhaps most significantly, the threat from religiously motivated violent extremists has moderated. The offshore networks, capabilities and allure of groups such as ISIL and Al-Qaeda have been degraded, with their support in Australia declining accordingly. But I stress, it's dissipated, not disappeared. Ideologically motivated violent extremism, particularly nationalist and racist violent extremism, remains a threat and its adherents will continue to engage in offensive behaviours. While we remain concerned about these groups, we must distinguish between ugly actions, big talk and actual terrorism. ASIO assesses the vast majority of these extremists are more likely to focus on recruitment and radicalisation than attack planning in the foreseeable future. Over the last two years, there was also an increase in extremism fuelled by diverse grievances, conspiracy theories and anti-authority ideologies. While some individuals use violent rhetoric and some protests involve violence, we did not identify acts of terrorism. The Australian community remained impressively resilient and many of the grievance narratives, narratives lost momentum as COVID restrictions were eased. There's one other important factor I want to emphasise. The reduction in the threat level reflects the maturity of Australia's counter-terrorism frameworks, laws and resourcing. Australia is a safer place, not only because of the actions of my organisations and our partners in law enforcement, but also because of decisions of successive Commonwealth, state and territory governments. However, it is important to note that our assessment assumes there are no radical shifts in these policies, processes, laws or investments. And that is not a reference to the government's repatriation of women and children in Syria. Our consideration of the threat level took that decision into account. I can confirm ASIO conducted a thorough assessment before the decision to repatriate was made. The assessment included face-to-face -face interviews in Syria. I also want to emphasise that a lower threat level does not necessarily mean a lower operational tempo. Threat to life will remain a priority for me and my organisation and we will need to remain vigilant. As I said at the outset, terrorism is both an enduring threat and evolving threat and in some ways our counter-terrorism mission is becoming more challenging. 
The most likely terrorist attack in Australia involves the lone actor using a basic and easily obtained weapon, such as a knife or vehicle. These attacks are difficult to detect ahead of time and can occur with little or no warning. The proliferation of extremist content online means individuals are radicalising very quickly, in days and weeks, so the time between flash to bang is shorter than ever. In the coming decades, more than 50 convicted terrorist offenders are due to complete their sentences. Foreign fighters may return from the Iraq-Syria conflict zone, bringing dangerous ideologies and capabilities with them. Terrorism remains a significant threat in some parts of the world and an emerging menace in other parts, and developments overseas could resonate here in Australia. Significant challenges and changes in the onshore security environment are adding to its complexity. The radicalisations of minors is a particularly concerning example. While ASIO considered all of these factors when deciding to lower the terrorism threat level, I can almost guarantee it will need to go up again at some point in the future. But that is no reason to refrain from lowering it now. But it is a reason for ASIO to stay on the case, to continue our counterterrorism effort, to give Australian people the safety, security and assurance they deserve. Thank you.